Hi friends, welcome back to So Honey Bee. In today's video, we will be doing the Sophisticated Trio. Now this pattern is considered a skill builder. There are five different techniques that you can practice on with this one pattern. We have a zipper pocket, there is a slip pocket, also a slip pocket with card slots. We all like card slots, right? And this pattern also does have binding. Don't let the binding stop you or the corners. I'm going to show you a really good technique on how to do this so that it's very easy. You can get this pattern and practice on any of these techniques. And because it's a small project, it doesn't take much. There are a lot of patterns out there now that are using binding. And once you're confident with this small project, you can go on to the larger projects like the Fold and Zip Backpack by Sophisticated Crafts Designs. Now I want to show you the different sizes. This one here is the large and it is the one that we are making in this tutorial. This one here is the medium size. And then this one is the small one. And the small is another technique and that is working with clear vinyl. Now this vinyl here I got from Whimsical Fabric Designs. They were one of the sponsors for the Sophisticated Clutch for the month of April. That was adorable. This one, I didn't even put D-rings or binding on it. Now for the medium, what I did was I put a zipper pocket and a slip pocket inside. I didn't use the card slots on this one. Now this fabric I got from Backstitch Fabrics. It is Goonies. And the reason why I did this one was for my on-the-go pouch. It fits in there just right. Now for this on-the-go pouch, I actually insulated it. So now I can pack my lunch inside and put anything I want inside that little pouch and I'm ready to go. Another one I made that I wanted to share with you is this one right here. I didn't even put the D-rings on it, okay? But I did the same thing, zipper, slip pocket, card slots in the inside. Now this vinyl I got from Whimsical Fabric Designs as well. So again, here is our clutch that we will be making in the tutorial today. Now, if you are wanting to become better at any of these skills, this pattern is for you. Now, I've put an affiliate link for this pattern in the description below. And there's a coupon code that Jesse has given to all of you who are watching this video. If you like these videos and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, now let's get started. I want to go over the pieces before we get to sewing. I've grouped my pattern pieces together in relation to where they are going with each other. So here I first of all have my gusset. In my gusset I'm going to need two D-rings. Okay, So I have my D-ring piece and I have two D-rings right here. I have my main zipper which is cut to the length of the pattern. You want to make sure this is really accurate because you're not going to be cutting down the zipper anymore. This is the final length of that zipper. For my gussets I have two lining pieces and I have two exterior pieces. So that's all with my gusset. Then I have a wristlet strap. Okay, I'm going to actually be using it to go from one end of the clutch to the other, but you can also use it for a wristlet. And with that I have two swivel clasps. Now I have one exterior panel here. You actually have to cut out two, but this one is going to remain blank. That's why this one's by itself, but you do need two of them. What I love about this pattern is she gives you three options for the inside lining. This is one of them here, and that is card slots. I have one lining piece, but we will be cutting out two of them, but you will need one lining piece. You're going to need your card slots, card slot panel lining, and then two side panels. So that is for one of the options. Your second option for a panel is for a slip pocket. So you will need to cut out one slip pocket. It's really nice that it's all in one piece. There's no other pieces. You get all that slip pocket done with one piece. The third option now is for a zipper pocket. Now since I'm doing the card slots and the slip pocket on the inside lining, I will be demonstrating the zipper pocket on my exterior. So that's why I had one exterior here. Here's the other exterior. So with that, I will need the exterior or the lining piece, wherever you're going to use your zipper pocket. You're going to need one zipper pocket lining and one zipper. I have also two zipper pulls for my top zipper and then I have one zipper pull for this one here. So those are all the pieces and the hardware that we will be needing for this pattern. So let's get started. 
Okay, so where I'm going to start is with the D-ring. I'm going to fold these long edges into the center, just like that. And then I'm going to top stitch on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, now I'm going to take a short pair of scissors fold my D-ring in half, and then cut it into two. Okay, so now I'm going to put on my D-ring, and I'm making sure that the flat portion of my D-ring is on the raw edge side. Fold it over, put a clip. Okay, so now my D-rings are done, and I'm going to put those aside because we're going to use them right now. Now I have two of my zipper pulls. I want to get my zipper and add my zipper pulls going in opposite directions so that they are closing in towards each other. Okay, and now when I put in the zipper, I want to make sure that both of them line up with each other and there's no bubble or no bowing of the zipper on either side. So now I want to burn up my edges of my zipper good habit to be in. And now I want to take my D-ring, I want to put it on the edge, okay so now I want to baste my D-rings on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I have my gusset pieces. There are two exterior and two lining pieces. I want to grab the end of my zipper with one of my gussets, the exterior, and I'm going to put them right sides together. Then I'm going to grab one of the lining pieces right side up and place that on the back. Now, I'm going to be sewing across the top here using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And because this is so small, I'm putting my clips on the sides. Now I'm going to sew across the top using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And it's really important that this is accurate because remember, this is your length of your gusset that is going to go around your little pouch. Now you want to go slow here because this is actually seven layers that you are sewing through. Because you have your exterior, your zipper, your lining, and then your D-ring is actually four layers. Okay, so it's a total of seven. Now let's do the other side. And this is some, the thickest part of this project is this seam right here. Now if you do not have the D-rings, then it's going to be a lot easier. Okay, so now I've turned both pieces towards each other. So now wrong sides are together right here. Okay, now I want to make sure that they match up with each other at the bottom. and then clip it all the way around. Now you have an option here because the pattern tells you to top stitch across here. But this is now nine layers that we're going through. So you have two options. You can either top stitch it if you're using a thinner fabric and everything and you feel that your machine can do it, go for it. But the other option you can do is put a rivet right there, and that's what I think I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to put a hole down the center for my rivet. Do the same thing to this side. Okay, so now our rivets are in there, 
and that is really, really going to be sturdy and tight there. Okay. Now I want to base these two pieces here together so that they become one piece. Okay, so now that piece there is one complete piece. Now do the same thing to this side. Now my gusset is complete. I have the two zipper pulls, my D-ring, and then my gussets as one piece. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. Now let's get started with the first of our panels. Now I am doing the zipper pocket and I'm going to put it on the exterior. You can put it on the inside or the exterior. I'm going to be doing it this way so that that way I can show you how it's done. So now I have my zipper pocket lining and my zipper. The short side is your top side. The two long sides, those are your sides of your pocket. Now I want my zipper to close from right to left. We are going to sew the bottom of our zipper pocket first. So even though I want my zipper closing from right to left, I need to turn my zipper around so I'm sewing on the bottom first. So my zipper now is closing from left to right. Clip it along the top and then baste it. Okay, now I want to fold my zipper out so that now I'm looking at the back side of my zipper. I want to bring the bottom portion, which is now the top, <laughs> to the zipper and baste it across the top doing the same thing. Now here I want to make sure that my two sides over here are meeting up with each other. Okay, now our zipper lining is complete for right now. So I'm going to set that aside. Now I have my pattern piece along with my exterior. This pattern marking is for our zipper pocket. So I want to transfer that over. Okay, so now I want to grab a pair of scissors and I want to snip down the center. Now I want to cut to the ends to open out this zipper panel. Making sure that I do not go outside of that box. Now I want to fold my piece down along that line. And because when I drew this line here, I pressed hard, so it kind of put a dent right where I want it to go. Now if you can iron this portion, that's wonderful. Go ahead and do so. But it can be finger pressed as well. Now we have our zipper pocket and let's see, it goes this way on my panel. Okay, because my zipper is closing from right to left. I'm going to sew the bottom portion first. So I want to only expose my bottom seam. So I want the pocket to go up. I want to place my exterior panel along this edge here, making sure that this is folded down right where I want it. Okay. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch it along this edge. Now I'm not going to back stitch here because I'm going to turn those pieces to the other side and tie them off. Okay, now I'm going to pull up on my thread and it exposes a loop and you can pull your thread to the other side. So now I have both of my thread pieces on this side and I'm going to tie them off, clip them, and then burn up the edges. Okay, so now I'm going to put my zipper back in place. Okay, so now my zipper pocket is back where it's supposed to go on this side. And so now on this side, the only edge that is exposed is the top edge, and that's where we're going to sew now. Okay, 
Okay, so now I want to sew across this edge here, across the top, and then down. And again, not back stitching because I'm going to tie off the ends the same way I did the other side. Okay, so now my zipper is installed, okay, and now I want to close off my sides to my pocket. So I'm going to sew going down here on both sides. Okay, now I want to take my zipper scissors and cut down my zipper. And so now you can see that my pocket is completely out of my seam allowance, okay? And my pocket is completely closed off. So now that is our first panel option complete, and that's the zipper pocket. So now let's go on to option number two. Now here is our slip pocket. You can see here that she gives you a marking where you are going to fold it wrong sides together and top stitch it. Then you're going to fold it to meet this portion up here, okay? So, I have clipped the sides right here to where that fold is supposed to be. So much easier to do it this way. And then press it. Now, this is our first fold, and so we want to top stitch across here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now we have our marking on top that I've also clipped. So now I want to bring this up to that marking right there and add a clip. Do the same thing to this side. Okay, and there's our slip pocket. So easy. I, I really like this because it's one piece, top stitch, fold, and you're done. Okay, so now I'm going to add this tag. It says, you look really pretty today. <laughs> I really like that. So now I'm going to add that to this side. So now I'm going to baste both sides using a 1 8 inch seam allowance, which is a basting seam. There's my slip pocket complete. All one piece, a top stitch, and a fold. Add your tag, and you're done. <laughs> I like this. So now we're at our third option, and that is for card slots. We all love card slots, don't we? So what you're going to need is you are going to need your card slot panel, okay? And she makes it really easy, and instead of having you measure, all you have to do is snip where she tells you, and those are all going to be where your folds are, okay? So that's really simple for that. You need a card slot panel lining, you need one final panel, and then two panel sides. Okay, so let's start off with folding our card slots. Okay, so here's my top and here's the bottom. I want to find my first marking, which is right here, and I want to fold it right there. And I am folding it wrong sides together. Okay. So fold it wrong sides together, making sure that my sides are matching up with each other. And then clip it. Now I want to find my next clip, which is right here. Okay. So now I want to fold this going this way. And then match up my sides 
and clip it. Do the same thing to this side. And clip it. And finger press it. Okay. Find the next one. Right sides together, wrong sides together, all the way till you get to the top. So now I want to take the card and make sure it's all the same, and it is. I really like doing it this way a lot better than measuring them out because you just clip it and fold. I really like that. Okay, so now what I want to do is top stitch each of these layers using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So now what I've done is I've added some scotch tape. You can use any kind of tape. Just make sure that it's not going to leave a residue. I have found my center and drawn a line from one side to the other. Now what I want to do is I want to sew on both of these sides of this line just about a sixteenth away from the line so that the center is about an eighth of an inch final. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm dividing these card slots into two. So now you can see they've been divided into two. So now I'm going to get my lining piece and I'm going to sew the lining piece to my card slots. So now I want to put them right sides together matching up the top portion. Now you really want to make sure that your card slots are going the right way. Okay, You don't want to put this upside down because we're closing off the top portion because this is going to be an additional slip pocket. Okay, and the seam allowance is going to be a quarter of an inch. Now I want to take my scissors and reduce the bulk, making sure that I'm not snipping into my threads. So you see, just like that. Okay, so now I want to press this back on itself. And then I want to top stitch this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. There's our center panel complete. Now I want to grab my two side panels, okay, and I want to put them right sides together and I want to match up the bottom portion because there's going to be an overhang over the top. Okay, so I want to match up my sides first. So now I'm going to sew this on using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the top. I'm just going to start right here and then go down. So now I'm going to finger press this down and I want to fold my excess to the back and then put a clip on it. Okay, now I want to do the same thing to this side. So now I can take off my tape, and I didn't take off the tape on the back side, but I'm just going to leave it. 
So now I have my lining panel and I found my centers and I want to meet these centers up with each other. I know that this is the center here of my card slots so I'm going to meet them up at the bottom and then clip it. Now don't be alarmed when you see that the credit card slots do not match up with your panel because this here is a rectangle whereas this is tapered on the both sides so they're not going to meet up with each other. Okay, so just clip it the best you can. So I'm going to finish off that fold over by top stitching across the top, top stitching down here, and then baste all the way around. Okay, and I'm going to start on the outside. I didn't even catch it on this side okay but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim down my side and I'm going to now baste it again so that I know that I caught that side for a certainty okay so that's much better there now I'm going to do the same thing to this side now on this side what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clip it before I top stitch it to make sure that I catch this edge here. Now I'm going to put my clip back. Okay, so now I am sure to catch all of my sides. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing and base this side. So now both edges are done, and now I want to do the bottom edge. Okay, so now our third and final panel is complete. That was so easy. <laughs> I like that. So now I have all the pieces to my clutch. I have two exteriors. One is plain, and one has a zipper pocket. Then I have my two interior panels. One is a slip pocket and the other one is a card slot pocket. Then I have my gusset. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to put these four pieces together. So I want to put right sides together, matching up the bottom, and clip it. I'll do the same thing to my lining piece. Okay, so now I'm going to so these bottom seams on both of them using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now I want to clip both of these ends to reduce the bulk on those corners. And this is real important to do right here because I want very little bulk in that seam. So now I want to finger press this down because I want to top stitch on both sides of this seam so that it is very flat. Okay, And I'm going to do that using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's top stitch down now. Okay, and if you are new to top stitching, nothing says you have to do this at an eighth of an inch. Try that a quarter of an inch first, and then once you feel confident about your top stitching at a quarter of an inch, then go to an eighth of an inch. So now this is really very thick because we have quite a few layers here, and this side is really thin because we only have one. 
So what I'm going to do, instead of opening this seam out and top stitching, I'm just going to move it over towards my slip pocket and top stitch it here. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to clean up all my threads. And you know one thing I did forget to do was to burn the edge of my zipper. I notice that now because it's starting to fray. So don't forget to burn the edge of your zipper and finish off those seams. This is where you're going to add your tag if you have one. You can add it on either side that you want. Okay? I do not have a tag so I'm going to skip over that portion. Um, but if you have a tag, obviously you know how to put it on. Now I have all the parts that I need assembled. I have my gusset with the zipper and D-rings. I have my lining that has a slip pocket slip pocket on this side and six card slots. Then I have my exterior that has a zipper pocket. So these are now all the pieces that we need as well as a huge amount of clips because we're going to need quite a few for this project here. So I'm not going to do the gusset just yet because I want to put these two pieces together as one piece. So I'm going to put my exterior piece face down. Okay, and my lining piece on top of that face up. Now I want to show you something. Here with all this card slots and everything, it's thick. Over here, it's very thin because all I have is just a slip pocket. On my exterior, I have a zipper pocket on this side, so it's also thick. But over here, I don't have anything. Now what I want to do is I want to flip this so that both sides are even. So now I have a thick side over here with a thin side. Then I have a thin side with a thick side. Now, if you are using a fabric or some kind of a material that you feel that you are going to need to put extra stabilizer, this is when you do it. You will either baste it to your lining or iron it, fuse it, however you want to put it on there to your lining portion. But make sure that it is out of your seam because we want as little bulk as possible in that area. Now first of all I'm going to match up my two side seams with my exterior and my lining. Okay now I want to clip them right with each other so that they become one piece. Okay so I'm going to clip it all the way around and if you use the correct seam allowances and everything they should be right with each other. If you have a slight discrepancy, look at how my exterior is a little larger than my lining in this corner. That's okay because it's within the quarter of an inch seam allowance. And right here where this tag is, I'm going to put the clip all the way in there so that this doesn't fold up or anything like that and get caught in that seam when I'm basting it around or when I'm adding my binding. You know, doing binding is a skill just like any other sewing technique. The more you do it, the more proficient you will become. So if this is your first time in doing a binding project, it might not come out too good, but it might come out really awesome too. You got to just give it a shot. You got to give it a go. And even if it doesn't come out that good, actually not very many of our first projects came out perfect, right? There are so many awesome patterns out there that are using binding now. This is the perfect starter project for binding because it doesn't take a lot of material. You could even eliminate all of the insides portions and all the bells and whistles to this pouch and just leave it a plain inside and a plain outside and just practice on the binding. You know, it's up to you. And then after you get proficient or gain your confidence in that technique and that skill, then you go on to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to base this all the way around using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So Ok, 
Okay, so now it's all basted and it's all one piece now. So I want to make sure that I caught all the basting on all this side as well. And look, right here, it pulled away. So I want to push all this up again and then baste it across the top. Now I'm going to be sure to correct anything that I need because I want to make sure that this is all one piece. Okay, so I missed a spot right here. I went off just a hair. As you can see, there was a slight discrepancy right there. And then it's slight right here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that again. Okay, so now you can see that is all basted on now, all the way around. And that looks good. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take my scissors and cut it down to the right size. Okay, so that both of them are like using one piece. Okay, and right across the top. And we're talking maybe a sixteenth of an inch here. And just right here, just a slightest amount. Now, if your pieces are more than an eighth of an inch, then there was something that went wrong with the seam allowance or something. But if it's just a tiny bit like this, that's nothing. It's, it's okay. Now it's time to attach our gusset to our final piece. So now, I want to, first of all, find the centers of my gusset. Now, I want to put my gusset, my exterior to my exterior, right sides together, matching up those edges there. This tip that I am passing on to you was shared by one of the testers of this pattern. Her name is Colleen Davis. She basted the bottom portion first at using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So that's what I'm going to do. So look right here. You see where the portion where it's flat and straight? That's where we're going to baste it. Do not come over into here or anything because then you're going to be getting into your, your exterior. I just want to sew just right across here using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So okay, so now if you see this is basted just along that straight edge. It's not going into the corner whatsoever. Same thing over here, just across the straight edge. Okay, so now I've marked my center points on the top and the bottom, and I have marked my center points with my zipper as well. And now I want to start adding these clips and going all the way around on this side only. I should put my clips going the right way. Now, I want to try, first of all, clipping around this curve here without clipping my zipper. I'm wanting to see if my fabric will allow that. Because if the fabric you are using may let you do it and it may not. It's All fabric is different. Okay, now I want to show you something. You see that since we did this here, look at how this here now is fitting inside of there perfectly. I really like this tip she gave us because now we're not sewing such a harsh corner. We're just sewing just right there. You know, that's what I really love about being a part of a sewing community. There are so many of us with different techniques and ideas and things we've learned and been taught by others along the way that we can pass on and share with each other. And I just really think that that is just really awesome. Now, some of you may know that I am a tailor by trade. Um, it's and been I a lot of years that I've been sewing and I have learned a lot of techniques along the way from other people who have sewn over the years. Bag making is still so new to me and the sewing skills and techniques that are used in bag making 
are definitely ones that can be carried over and shared, you know. Okay, so here, see here on this corner, on this side, I'm getting a little bit of a pucker right there. So what I'm going to actually do is clip in my corner first because I know that fits perfectly. I'm going to take out that little tuck like that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to, so now what I want to show you is how that went in there just right. There is a little bit of a pulling here on the edge right there, and I might put a clip or two. Same thing with this one here, but look at that side too. Because we basted right here, that went in there just perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a straight line because I am not going to get into this corner right now. I'm going to continue to just base this. You know, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn this just a hair, just maybe one or two slits, just to relieve the pressure right there. And I am definitely staying in within the quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you see how I just put a couple of clips in there? Okay, so when I sew around these corners here, I'm going to use the hemostat so that I can pull it into place and go around. Okay, now I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to sew this way into the corner. But I'm not going to sew in the curve. Okay, I'm just going to sew up to that corner and stop. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Start at the middle and go all the way to the corner but not into the curve. Okay, and I'm going to move over my zipper pulls now so that they are completely out of the way. And go really slow here if you need to. Now here I'm going to flatten out my zipper so that this corner is exposed. And I'm going to go ahead and remove my clips. Throw a couple of them on the ground obviously. <laughs> And now I'm going to use my hemostat and make sure that that is right on there. Okay. So now I've moved the camera because I wanted you to get a better look here. Now here I want to make sure that my rivet is out of the way and it will be. It'll be it'll clear the quarter inch and the basting stitch at in one eighth inch. Okay. So now I'm gonna, what I'm trying to do is continuing to manipulate my fabric on the top as well as on the bottom to make sure that they do exactly what I want them to do. Now I'm going to go all the way in as far as I can. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I want to show something to you here. On our basting stitch here, we stopped right there. On this basting stitch here, we stopped here. So you're looking at probably about a three-eighths of an inch right there. That is a hole. Okay, so now I want to do the same thing on the other side. But first of all, I want to move my zipper pulls out of the way because I'm going to start here and then go that way. Okay, so I want to make sure that my zipper pulls are out of the way from where I'm basting. Now, usually we do not sew on this side of our zipper, but this is a basting stitch, and right here. I can just lift up on it and I can see right there where my zipper is. And so I can use my hemostat and make sure that I see my zipper lined up right there and it'll do just fine. So remember this is just a scale like all the other sewing scales. The more you do it, the more proficient you will become. See here that the bottom 
it's moving on me a hair. So I want to make sure to pull it back into place. Okay. Okay, so now I want to do the opposite to what I did the other side. And so I'm going to manipulate my fabric so that it's out of my way. Now I want to see if this worked. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let me make sure that you can see this. Okay, right here, it looks like I did good. Over here, it looks like I missed my zipper. So I gotta fix that. But over here it did really good too. So right there, you can see that corner, how it went in. And then this corner I showed you before. So now, I'm going to fix this portion here. That where it basted, but it didn't catch my zipper. Okay, did it work? I think it did, but I think that sewing from the middle out this way and then starting again and going the other direction, I don't think that that helped out too much because I didn't catch my zipper on this side, okay? So now I'm going to try it going in one fell swoop, okay, from this corner and then go all the way to this corner. If I can't get into this corner all the way, what I might do is just start from right here and then end it off over here instead of going one way and the other way. So now let's try that one. <laughs> so now I'm trying a number of different ways that I can do this so that you can look at it and say, hey, I think I can try that one or I can try this one or, or maybe you even have your own idea. If you do, add it in the comments below. Now, I know that I had to snip it on that side, so I am going to go ahead and snip it also on this side. Now, if you do not have a thread zapper, what you may want to do is just um, snip it with your scissors and then burn it. I really enjoy making these videos, and with each one, I'm trying to become more and more better at, at making the tutorials. Just like a skill. Video making is a skill as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Clip it going this way. And it looks like there's a lot of fabric here in this corner. But what I'm going to do is I am going to move it up towards my corner up here. Okay. Okay. So now let's go the other way. So now we're ready to sew this side. Now my reason for starting in the middle and going to each side was because I could really get deep into here, into this uh, corner here. But 
in starting there, I can't get so far into there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right around here, go all the way around, and go into that corner over there. And then I'm going to have to turn it around and then go the other way. And now I'm sure that'll work because that's the way I made the other ones. So you can see how I can't really get into that corner. so that I can get as far as I can into that corner. And what I'm doing with my finger here is I'm pushing back on the top. Let me remove these clips so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm pushing back on this top layer and then I'm getting my hemostat and pushing my bottom layer so that they can line up with each other exactly. I'm going to go ahead and stop there because I think, yeah, I started going off track a little bit. Okay, but overall it looks pretty good. Get on this side because see here how large of a distance between my basting stitches are? I want to close that up as much as possible. So I'm going to do it coming from the other side. Okay, so I want to push this. Let me open this out. Might be easier if I open it. Okay. So now, let's see, I want to sew here. Kind of talking to myself, and I guess talking to you at the same time. Okay. So now, I know those two pieces are lined up. Let me take off this one. And I can see my bottom piece right there. You see how this is my bottom piece and this is my top piece? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to manipulate the top to go right over the bottom. With a pair of these, it makes it really easy. It just takes time. Okay, so now let's check it out. Let me show you close up. This is reality here. <laughs> okay. I really like the way that came out and on this side came out really good too. Okay so now it's all basted and the wonderful thing about that is we don't have to use clips. We don't have to use staples. It's already basted. I'm going to move my zipper pulls out of the way. Okay so here we go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay let's get started. I want to really feel the thickness that I'm sewing through because I want to make sure I don't get my D-ring. Okay, now I'm going to start manipulating my fabric in order to get into that corner. I'm pushing the top layer back with my hemostat so that my bottom layer is exposed. Okay, so that way I know that they are right on top of each other right where I want them to be. And as I'm going with every stitch, I'm pulling up on this side. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this to start standing up on itself so that I can sew the bottom portion. And I'm going just barely step by step, literally. <laughs> okay. And just go really slow. Pick up your foot if you need to. Now my machine has a needle positioner so that um, what that is is every time I stop my needle is in the damn position 
If you do not have a needle positioner, you may want to make sure that your needle is in your project before you lift up your presser foot. And just keep moving it. Keep manipulating the fabric. Because see, now I'm sewing straight up and down. So now I'm going to start manipulating my project again so that eventually it will be standing up again so that I can sew on this side. And again, I'm going to push in my top so that I can see that the bottom layer is exposed. And that right there is right on with each other because it's right in that corner. So now as I every stitch that I'm sewing, I am pulling this down towards me so that that bottom starts standing up. Okay, so now it's standing up. And make it flatten here because I feel a little... Oh my goodness, you guys, we did it. <laughs> okay, so now let me take a look at the whole thing. Make sure everything. Let me put the light on it here. I was off right there. Just the tiniest bit, but I can live with that. <laughs> everything else looks really good. Okay, so now I have my waterproof canvas cut to one inch width. So now what I want to do is I want to wrap it around and I want to put a clip on it. Okay. Now I want it to be able to cover up both stitching on this side as well as this side. Okay. But up here when I get to my zipper, I do not want it to be too close to my zipper or else it could hinder my zipper from opening and closing. So I want to be really careful about that. So I'm going to put it on up here first. And I'm putting my clips face up with my zipper because when I sew this, that's the direction I'm going to be sewing it with my zipper on top. Okay. And just keep going all the way around.
And so I want it to line up. I want it to line up with my previous one. So right here, this edge and this edge here, I'm trying to line those two edges up. And then fold it. So when I look at it from this way, so that when I look at it from this way, you can't see that that's where my binding is, where my end is. Look at it. Make sure. If you need to add more clips, you add them. If you need to make any adjustment, you make it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm ready to sew this. Okay, so now let me take a look at my corners, my gusset inside, looks pretty good, my zipper top, looks good, okay, everything looks really good, my gusset looks good, everything looks really good, I think this could have been a little bit better, <laughs> ending stitches right there but I can live with it <laughs> okay so now the moment of truth that is to turn this out Now this is the moment of truth. Let's see how our gussets came out. I think it came out pretty good. <laughs> okay, my zipper pocket, really good. On the inside, I have slip pocket, card slots, and a slip pocket on this side. Okay. Oh my goodness. I really like the way that this came out. And now, all I need to do is a strap. And we are all done.
and there's my little strap complete. Now I can choose to put both of them on one side and use it as a wristlet or I can put one clasp on both sides and use it as a little bag. I really like the way that this came out. I hope that you get this pattern and pick any of the options on here that you would like to use as a skill builder and go ahead and make it. I know that you'll enjoy it too. Okay, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.